Good afternoon and welcome to today's Spotlight webinar, 3D Expert Conformal Cooling. We invite you to ask questions throughout the presentation by using your Q&A tab on the right as your phone is muted during the session. We will address the questions received at the end of the presentation. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be available in a few days. I would now like to introduce you to our presenter, David Lindemann, Application Engineer for 3D Systems. With that, I will turn the floor over to David. Thank you very much, Lisa. I also would like to thank everyone for being with us this afternoon. We'll keep our presentation fairly brief, and of course, we're going to focus today on 3D Expert with conformal cooling. People are beginning to hear more and more about conformal cooling, especially when it comes to a mold design application. So we'll just review a few of the guidelines that we found to be very important in successfully using it. And that way we can see how 3D Expert software can satisfy those important guidelines. First thing is we have to follow the shape of the part and get it in equal distance as fairly close but equal distant to the part as we can. Now the idea of keeping a uniform flow of, of water around the part is important, keeping that same equal distance away from the part. And with that too, we want to keep an equal distribution. So as you see me layering up these water lines, the intent behind that is to keep it uniformly spaced across the area of the part. Should we find a situation where we want to change the shape of the water line? It's important that the cross-sectional area be the same as those shapes may change. So maybe I've got a situation where I need to narrow it quite a bit to sneak it between a couple of mold features. As I do that, I also need to elongate it like you see here so that I keep the same fixed cross-sectional area. And then with that too, any water line we come up with, we have to be able to print. You know, it has to be done with a 3D metal printer. So a large overhanging face, like you see in the top example with the square, would be much more difficult to print than in the bottom example with the green check. And that's because it's flat across the top. There's nothing supporting it underneath. Whereas with the conic shape on the top, that pyramid shape, it's self-supporting. So those are some of the guidelines that we would look at. Uh, just a little bit more about shapes. We've done some study on shapes and found that the different shapes do make a difference. Typically, round is what we see the most, yet that's not necessarily the best one for pulling the heat away from the molded part. Uh, we found that shapes that offer a greater perimeter have more surface area that can pull heat. The, granted, the, again, the cross-section is the same as you see here. That way the volume of water going through it is the same. But we can take advantage of the shape in order to get uh, a greater perimeter around it. Other shapes of note besides, say, the triangle one we just looked at are teardrop shapes. These have proved to be very effective. Now, one thing about them is they're very easy to print, but also you can rotate the teardrop so that the one flat side will be parallel to the molded face. That offers more direct surface area to pull heat away. So those are just a few of the principles we found dealing with conformal cooling. I've got a movie clip we'll run now as we that way I can talk over it and we'll explain more about what 3D Expert does and how it handles conformal cooling. I'm bringing in a, a file that was originally a step file so it's important right away to say that we can bring in CAD files and here in the modeling side of 3D Expert, you'll see conformal cooling. So I haven't gone into a, a printing setup yet. Right now I'm just modeling in what I want to work with. One of the common types of water lines for conformal cooling would be to race along underneath parting line. And the thought behind that is it's to reduce the warpage. That way the part is a better fitting part to whatever it's mating against. So here we just chased along the parting line edge and we'll use this curve that we're constructing to build a conformal cooling line. So with that, we'll drop it down in a set distance so we know we're going to keep that uniform distance away. We could offset it as well, make it bigger, make it slightly smaller. Uh, next, we're going to then build the inlet and outlet. Uh, this water line could be attached to an entire circuit. Uh, 
The idea is the tools you're seeing for doing this 3D construction are the same pretty much no matter how you go about building up your water lines. Now we're going to use a corner command which is going to allow me to round that corner where the inlet and outlet are. So with all the modeling tools available within 3D Expert, it's very easy to just simply construct freeform geometry like this. And there are other tools too that you'll see that are, are greatly beneficial. This is what we call a spine approach. Right? I'm building a spine that the water line is going to race along. All right, so with that, we'll join it into one composite curve. And that's what we're going to use then to build this first conformal cooling line. So getting into the actual function now, uh, the note at the top, you can dynamically pick your way through set locations, or in this case, we're using the spine approach. Here's the menu for all the different preset shapes for these water lines. And yes, you can include your own as well if you see something different. As we type in the value of the diameter, you'll note that the area is being saved and recorded. That way, if I change the shape, I can compare that cross-sectional area to the previous line I just made. Now we'll pick the composite, and you'll see how it builds that conformal cooling line. So here's a simple inlet-outlet type of conformal line. Again, if I were to desire to do so, I could tie it together into a full circuit that could spiral its way around the entire part. Now to show a bit more of the functionality we have here, uh, let's take this into bits and pieces. And as we do so, you'll see why. So I'm just going to loop across the top here. And we'll go ahead and build another shape of for a conformal line. Now this time, I'm going to use more of an ellipse. And the thought behind that is it's a very printable shape. But if you're to twist it, you would change that shape. No matter how you twist it, though, you won't be flipping it around so that a, a flat side would be on top like you might a triangle. And the thought behind this is to create turbulence. So we'll go ahead and build that elliptical looking water line. And as we do so, we're also going to include a twist. So let me make it a little bigger so you can see it. So you kind of got that, looks like a piece of licorice, I guess zipping around in there. So that will be a much more turbulent water line, which mixes the water, which enhances its ability then to pull the heat away. Uh, even the inside finish of a printed water line is helpful because it's not entirely smooth, and that also will add turbulence. So just to tie this together, we'll go back in. Now we'll pick a round because we would like a round in the vertical section of the water line. That way we can easily drill and tap as we need to for a standard pipe fitting to hook the water line to. So here I'm drawing it straight. Now we might flip it around to, oh, it had the twist on it. So undo the twist. The first section was uh, straight, so now let's use a spline approach, which allows it to be more of a free flowing curve. And then here I'm just digging along those points, and you'll see how it smooths out. With that, we can now transition back into that elliptical shape. And tweak the numbers a bit. Again, checking the cross-sectional diameter, or cross-sectional area, sorry. And now we'll just simply merge it right into the existing water line that's already there. Right. So a little bit of massaging. It's easy to get whatever shape we want. Maybe I want to try to run a full circuit in one step. Maybe I want to take my time and be specific in certain locations, how I want that water line to look. These are created as two separate objects, so we'll simply merge these, and then we'll be able to proceed on. And the idea is, of course, then as an object, they'd be cut away from the cavity block, creating the hole, basically, for that conformal cooling line. All right, like we said, we could tie this together to an entire circuit, and that could provide some interesting construction methods. I'm showing you mostly the what I'd call uh, the more manual approaches first, where I'm actually building things to support the water line. Here you see planes right in the very center, kind of pinkish, purplish. And the idea of this construction you're about to see was that I intersected the core with those planes to create this dark blue water circuit 
running through the middle. Using the same tools as before, we grab the intersection, offset them in, and then loop them together using a corner command or just tying them together with some simple lines and curves. After uh, sewing them together, go ahead into the conformal cooling line and you can see that that entire circuit could be built just off of one curve. So it's all a matter then of how you want to tie them together. Going further, let's look at some other interesting options available within conformal cooling. So to do that, let's uh, hide a few things. That way it's easier to see. And what I'm really going to focus on is working right off the mold faces. And the thought behind that is how can I be sure then that I'm staying that uniform distance, that 3D offset distance that's so critical. The function itself will help you, not just in the construction methods you saw, but particularly here. So we're going to dynamically pick our way around this. And as we do so, with the spline option to smooth it, we're going to use an offset. So on the fly here, we're just going to create an offset mesh based upon those particular mold surfaces. That way we know as we pick our way through, we're staying that set distance away. So if I want a more rigid construction for the waterline, you can see the tools I've used up to this point to get here. If I want a more dynamic, quick, responsive way, I could simply use this mesh approach as well. Some guys do that just to, to quote what they think they would like to see, kind of like get the concept of the waterline. So here we're just picking right along the mesh. Everything's very dynamic, and I'm not tied to anything. I can move up and down, back and forth. I could change the cross section to whatever I would want that to be. Each of those pink points is a control point. That allows me to go back, make any adjustments. Maybe I need to nudge it a little bit into a corner more so that I can get a better effect after I see how it operates. Now you see it's just very dynamic. And again, at each point, we can step back in and change our cross section if we desire. Uh, that also includes twisting it and adding all the other options that you've seen so far. Again, showing the individual control. And just to point out, if you have a different water line, you certainly can use that cross-section as well. So a lot of tools tied together here. Go ahead and build that. You get an idea how it's starting to come together. Everything about this is history-based. It's all parametric. So if I were to go back and make any kind of change, it's very easy just to go to the feature in that history and then say right click edit. So let's say we go back to that last one. Let's do a check on it to make sure that it is that uniform distance that we're looking for. So we'll go to our visual analysis tool. We can set in a set distance we want. I want to see if it is, in this case, oh, a good half an inch away from the mold faces. So now it's going to calculate against all those part faces on the core insert. If I see red, that says within that distance it's violated. You could even kind of see the red it drew against that cylinder body, showing me that in this particular area I'm a little too close if that's the distance I want to keep. Maybe put in a smaller value, recalculate, now I know uniformly it's, it's looking good within that distance. So a very nice tool to visualize exactly what we're doing as we're building this particular water line. So briefly, we've given you a quick overview of uh, what's involved in conformal cooling. And with that, I'd like to show you a few other things. So clicking ahead here, uh, let's look at a few completed circuits. And you can see there's a variety of things involved here. On the left, you see it's basically one in, one out per circuit, different shapes, more of a radial pattern. It's definitely tied to the part geometry as it works its way in and out of some very deep ribs. So you can see that each job is going to have its own set of circumstances to deal with. 
So being able to dynamically build these things and you know in a responsive way is very helpful. It's a mixture both of the science and art of creating a good water line. You have to stick to the rules, but sometimes you have to be very creative in order to accomplish this. Then on the right side, you can see some transitions going through it, where it's round going up and down, and then it transitions into a, a teardrop. Other areas, it has to loop back over the top as it goes around in between features, and it's very, very uh, uniform. All right? It's a, a constant distance apart from the water lines and also from the mold faces. Here's a complicated one that we've shown people for quite some time. There's actually two circuits built into it. The purple is one, blue is the other. And each one of these starts with a big water line coming in, and then it branches off into capillaries and comes back into the center where it exhausts out. So a rule displayed here is that the sum of all those little cross sections has to add up to equal the cross section of the inlet and outlet. That way there's, again, equal volume. On the right-hand side, you see a, an example of where it had to get scrunched up so that it could get between mold features, but you know, as elongating it, it still was able to maintain that same cross area throughout the water line. Then in the middle, you see the standing light purple pinkish blades almost uh, blown up here more so on the left. This was the hardest way to construct it. it had to literally offset the faces, trim the faces, in order to construct this kind of water line. If you imagine trying to take a round up and through where there's not enough room, it would have been completely ineffective, impossible. But here, manually offsetting the faces and trimming them back provided a solution. That requires a good modeler, in addition to having you know, a good system for conformal cooling. So I'd like to thank you very much. I hope our technical issues didn't uh, get anyone knocked off or hope you're still with us here. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And hopefully, Lisa, you're still with us. I can hand it back over to you. Very good.